We starting right now. Karma. In the world of stripping, you will always come across women of all different outlooks, intentions, motives, sit up, and morals. Me, I know what my motive was for dancing. To pay my bills. Nothing more, nothing less. On top of that, I like to party and meet people. Sure, it helped that I was 5'2 with a baby doll-like face, a tiny waist, and an unbelievable ass. And more than anything, my attitude always helped me stand out. While I've always been the type of person who delivers everything straight, no chaser, there are lots of people in the industry that don't follow the same guidelines. Finding out whom and what is real is one of the most difficult parts about dancing. Girl, I could agree to that. Tiffany, hey girl, I heard my friend Barry say as she sashayed into the dressing room one evening. I glanced over my shoulder and grinned widely at her. Not only was Barry one of my closest friends, but she was gorgeous too. Standing 5'7 with almond colored skin, a short haircut and slanted eyes. Barry was a favorite at Club Black where we both worked. Hey girl, I said as I finished applying the rest of my makeup, what's up with you tonight? Why are you grinning all big? Barry plopped down in a chair beside me and started giggling. I knew what that giggle meant, so I turned my face to her with my eyebrows raised. What the hell did you do now? Barry chuckled and finally caught her breath before speaking. Girl, you remember the, you remember the guy we met at the club two nights ago? The one with the locks? I nodded my head. I had definitely remembered him. He was close to 6'5", locks that hung to his shoulders and had sent over $1,500 worth of bottles to our table that night. Needless to say, Barry and Mr. Locks exchanged information. Yeah, I remember him. What happened? Barry opened her oversized Victoria's Secret bag and pulled out her makeup clutch and placed it on the table in front of her. Girl, some kind of way it got back the Chardonnay that I'm talking to him. I didn't know she was his old lady. I shook my head. It never amazed me how small the world was when it came to dancers and men. Skinny Chardonnay with the blonde hair that works here, I asked for clarification. Yeah, that hoe, Barry said without missing a beat. I like Barry. On top of her being about her money just like I was, she always had a slick mouth and an even slicker plan for making money. Whenever you would see her, you would see me. She was one of the few people that I trusted. So what happened? I asked as I played with my hair, hoping her story would get juicier. This bitch went through his phone, got my number, and called me. And you know me. I told her to share if she and if she couldn't give the dick a new owner. I couldn't stop laughing, even though Barry hadn't cracked a smile. So now she keeps prank calling me and I'm pretty sure I saw her pull up when I got here. I scrunched up my face. She works days though. Exactly. Now you see why it's so funny? All I'm trying to do is make money, Barry said while rolling her eyes. Hey y'all, I heard a voice say behind me. I glanced over my shoulder, hoping it wasn't Chardonnay and saw Barry's friend, Misty. Hey girl, we both replied, we both replied in unison. Misty was a nice girl and I liked her for the most part. While our friendship was nowhere near as close as the friendship I had with Barry, she and I had gotten along pretty well. Barry had known Misty for years, and because of that, she was granted access into our tiny little circle. We partied together, laughed together, and even danced together, if the dollar was right. It looks dead in here tonight, Misty said as she sat her bag down in the chair and put both of her hands on her hips, as if myself or Barry had an explanation. I shrugged while Barry acted like she didn't even hear Misty's statement. And what is Charnay doing out there causing a scene for? Big John had to escort her bony ass out the club. Barry and I looked at each other and laughed loudly. Girl, Barry around here stealing people's men, I said through my laughter. Barry smoked and applied a heavy coat of lip gloss on her full lips. She puckered them up and popped them for the dramatic effect before turning to Misty and I. I can't steal what doesn't want to be stolen, she said before standing up and heading to get dressed. How's Layla, I asked Misty. The one thing that stood out about Misty from the rest of the dancers in our circle was that, like me, she was a mother. My four-year-old son, Marcus, was my everything. Even though his father was not in the picture, I played both roles flawlessly, and because of that, Misty and I bonded. She's better now. The flu accidentally had her sick as a dog. No, the flu definitely had her sick as a dog. Is Marcus okay? I smiled widely and nodded my head. He's doing good, girl. A few more girls shuffled into the dressing room while music blared throughout. I decided on a black bikini-like outfit with a tiny fringy skirt that barely covered my ass. I looked good and I knew it. If there was one thing the club patrons could say, it was that I always went above and beyond with my outfits and shows. 
that was just me. I was adjusting my bra when I saw Perfection and Kat enter the room. Perfection and I locked eyes. I wanted to see if she was going to speak. And, well, I guess she wanted to see if I would. I could see that Kat's mouth was moving a mile a minute, but I tuned her out like always. Hey, Tiff, Perfection said slowly as she walked up to me and took a deep breath. Hey, I said, kind of relieved that I wasn't the one who had to speak first. Perfection and Kat were two more dancers at the club, while, and while they were cordial with one another, they couldn't have been any different. Kat, on one hand, was a bona fide liar. No, not the type of liar that lied and was apologetic. No. Kat lied and then lied to cover another lie. Everyone knew she was a liar, and for that reason, everyone chose to tune her out. Perfection, on the other hand, was a pretty cool chick. We had bonded and became pretty good friends until our fallout. We had a genuine friendship where we would tell each other secrets and laugh and talk about people together. Perfection was cool. One night while we were dancing together on stage, I drunkenly accused Perfection of stealing money from my pile. Bitch, I know you stole money from my pile. Give me my shit. I slurred as we bumped into each other in the dressing room. People were trying to calm me down, but with the amount of alcohol that was in my system and the thought of missing money floating around in my head, there was no calming me down. I ain't stole shit from you, Tiff. You, Tiff, you bugging. Perfection said as she tried to brush me off. Nah, bitch, I know you stole some of my money. You didn't think I saw you, did you? I eyeballed the trash bag full of money that Perfection had in her hand, and I reached for it. Perfection wasn't a tiny girl, but she was nowhere near fat. In fact, she reminded me of a stallion, standing tall and thick, just like the customer's like. She had beautiful chocolate skin and, really cute, and a really cute face. Aside from that night, I had never had any issues out of Perfection. In my vodka-induced haze, though, I just knew this girl had stolen from me, and I was not having it. Bitch, don't play with me, Perfection said as she slapped my hand away from her trash bag full of money. All I want is my fucking money, I screamed. Give me my money with your stealing ass. We continued going back and forth in the dressing room until one of us, me, got tired and just decided to go home. It wasn't until the next day when Barry told me what had happened that I remembered, and soon I realized Perfection hadn't stolen from me. Even though I knew I was wrong, it was something in me that wouldn't let me apologize right away. In fact, two entire weeks went by before I acknowledged how wrong I was to perfection. At first, she didn't even want to hear it. I mean, I had accused her of being a thief and called her everything but a child of God. But eventually, things got to where we could be cordial and we could speak. I like your new hairstyle, perfection said as she strutted past me and forced a smile on her face. I knew our friendship would never be the same after the stealing accusations, but at least we were speaking. Thanks, I replied as I stroked my platinum blonde hair. The men loved my blonde hair and I was in the business of giving the men whatever they wanted in order to get whatever I needed. <laughs> Period. Yes. Now let's get this money, I said as I clapped my hands and headed towards the club. Misty wasn't lying. That night, it was really so. So slow. In fact, I had enough time to walk around the club and talk to people. As I was walking, I felt the tug on my elbow. Normally, I would yank my arm back and cuss them out for putting their hands on me without paying. But today, I slowly turned around and glanced at who was grabbing me. Hey, what's up? I heard him say before my eyes connected with his. Immediately, I recognized him. His name was Clive, a regular at the club. I had seen him plenty of times before spending racks and popping bottles, but we had never crossed paths directly. Hey, I grinned and raised, as I raised my eyebrows to see if he, and to ask if he wanted to dance. What's your name? Tiff, I said. Unlike a lot of the other girls, my stage name was a regular street name, and I liked it. I've seen you around. Why you ain't never asked a brother if he wanted to dance? Clive was smooth as butter, and I was able to peep that from the get-go. I was trying to not to focus on his perfect teeth and juicy lips, but damn, he was fine. That night, he was wearing a dark blue Ralph Lauren hat, a striped polo shirt, and some polo jeans. He definitely has style and money. I don't ask niggas for dances, baby, I said coolly. I get axed for dances. You better ask about me. We both laughed at my confidence, and almost immediately, a connection was built. Clive wasn't trying too hard to come on to me, but he was definitely net letting it be known that he was feeling me. We made small talk, and before I knew it, three songs had passed, and I was still intrigued. Tiff to the stage, I heard the DJ say loudly. That's your cue, baby girl, Clive said with a wink. Yeah, it is, I said with a deep breath. For the first time, I was a bundle of nervousness and excitement as I mentally prepared to dance on stage. It wouldn't have been the first time I danced in front of a fireman, but Clive, 
He was different. Why you don't give me your number? Maybe we could do dinner or something. Clive said before I turned to walk away. Yeah, that's cool. I replied before I recited my number to him. That night, I danced like I never danced before. My body twisted and popped like I was giving a personal show. And in fact, in my mind, I was. I tried not to look in Clive's direction while I danced so I wouldn't lose focus. A few times I slipped though. Damn, he's fine. I said to myself as I slid down the pole and saw him grin with excitement. At the end of the night, Barry and I headed to our cars, talking shit the whole way. You better get in the car before Chardonnay jumps out of one of these bushes, bitch. I joked as I threw my duffel bag into the trunk of my car. Girl, Chardonnay and all the rest of these women who were mad at me for what their men do can kiss my ass. I saw you talking to old Clive, Barry said as she leaned against the car. You digging him? I shrugged my shoulders. I had just met him, so there's no way to know if I was actually, if I would actually like him. But for the time being, I was interested. I wasn't the type to easily get thrown off track by Dick. So for me, I was chilling and willing to see where things took us. Just make sure he's not Chardonnay's man, Barry said with a playful wink. Okay, so that's the first part of, of the chapter. All my stories are based on something that I've seen or personally have been through or, you know, that uh, other stories that other girls had told me. And, you know, I exaggerated them a little bit. This chapter happens to be like a true story. It all really, really, really happened. Only thing I did was change the names of the characters and that was it. But, uh, yeah, if y'all liking this, is y'all liking this chapter so far, this chapter is karma. Y'all let me know. Y'all put some hearts. Let me know if y'all want me to keep going. Or is y'all uninterested? Y'all feeling this chapter? This is karma. Remember, you can click the link in my bio to order your copy. The ebook version, the paperback version, or the signed paperback version. Okay? So, back to the story. Just make sure he's not Chardonnay's man, Barry said with a playful wink. At first, it was cute. He was playing hard to get. Then by the second week, I got frustrated. I had given my number to Clive two entire weeks ago and he still had a call. I was about to write him off when my phone rang one afternoon. Hey, baby girl, he said in the flyest way. Hey, what's up? I said, playing it cool. You wanna go to dinner tonight? My treat. Well, I knew it was your treat since you invited me. Where are we going? I heard Clive laughing on the other line and I knew, just like the others, I had him intrigued with my personality. Meet me at Houston's at 9 p.m., all right? Cool, see you there. I was playing it cool, but deep down, I was eager to see him. No man had ever taken two weeks to call me, and as badly as I wanted to say, fuck him, I really wanted to see what he was all about. When I arrived at Houston's, it was 10 minutes after 9. I knew I had to look good, so I took my time. I did look good, too. I had thrown on a black dress that fit my body like God himself had made it for me and a pair of black and red heels. My hair was bone straight and parted straight down the middle while my makeup was noticeable but not overwhelming. Before I left the house, I sprayed myself in all the right spots with my favorite Escada perfume. Where you going, mommy? Marcus said as I put the finishing touches on my look. I was so grateful that my mother had agreed to watch him while I went out with Clive. I'm going out to eat with a friend. Do you want me to bring you something back? I asked, knowing good and well that Marcus would be asleep by the time I got home. Burger and fries, mommy, Marcus screamed with excitement. I lived for his laughter and smiles. Okay, now you get in the bed before grandma comes up here and puts you to bed. I said with a wink and kissed him on the cheek. Walking into Houston's was interesting. There were many restaurants I had been to in the city, but Houston's was one of the few I hadn't. Hi, can I help you? The hostess asked as soon as I stepped inside. I looked around the crowded restaurant and wondered where Clive was. Almost immediately, I wondered if he had stood me up because I didn't see him nowhere. Nah, I told myself there would be no way in hell this nigga would stand me up. I'm waiting for a friend. We were supposed to meet here at nine, but I don't think... The hostess cut me off and waved her hand, sign signaling me to stop talking. Tiffany? I squinted my eyes and wondered how she knew who I was. Sure, I was known throughout the city as one of the best dancers, but I ain't know her. At least I thought I didn't. Right this way, she said cryptically. I'm, sh I'm not sure what compelled me to follow her, but I did. She let me pass all the tables and patrons that were enjoying their food and drinks. 
I saw a few of my customers in there who were with their wives or girlfriends. As usual, they stared, but they didn't speak. There was almost an unspoken rule that when you saw a customer out in public with their lady, you didn't even acknowledge that you knew them. The next time they came to the club, it seemed like they would make it rain 10 times as much because of your silence. All right, this book do got a, got a little bit of game in it now. If y'all listen, got game, got gems in this book now. Finally, we stopped at a glass door. I wasn't sure what was going on or why this hostess was leading me here, but when she opened the door and I saw Clive sitting there, a grin appeared. Have a great evening, the hostess said as she closed the door behind herself. I looked around at the private room and nodded my head coolly. I guess you decided to show up, huh? Clive asked playfully as I sat down in the plush leather seats. Fashionably late isn't the same thing as being flat out late, I said. I didn't even know they had private rooms here. Well, hell, I ain't never been here before. Clive seemed surprised as he took a sip of dark liquid in his glass. By the scent, I was willing to bet it was Crown Royal and Coke. As much money as you got, I know you should have been here before. Your man don't take you out. I chuckled. I hadn't had a real a man, a real call himself my boyfriend man for years. On top of that, the money I hadn't the on top of that, the money I had didn't determine what I did. My time did. First off, I have I have to have time to spend all the money I made. You feel me? I can have a billion dollars in my pocket, and if I don't have the time to spend it because I'm so busy making it, it's just a billion dollars in my pocket. Clive nodded in agreement, almost surprised by the fact that I could hold my own convo-wise. And I don't have a man. My work and my child are all the men I need right now. I lied. I wanted a man and badly. <clears throat> I just wasn't willing to settle for any bullshit to get one. Oh, you got a jit? How old is he? I got a little boy too. Yeah, he's four. His name is Marcus. What about you? By this time, the waitress had come back and taken another drink order. I ordered vodka and cranberry, and Clive ordered another crown and coat. My little man's almost seven. Crazy how kids can change the priority of everything, right? I sipped my drink and listened to him talk. I was listening. I really was. But more than that, I was paying attention to his mannerisms. See, you can usually tell when a man is about something and when he ain't shit at all. Clive seemed to be on the up and up. When he spoke to me, he looked me dead in my eyes. And when he listened to me, he did in my eyes and he listened to me. And when it was time to listen to me, he did the same. We connected right then and there like I had never connected with anyone else. Yeah, everything seemed, everything that seemed important before isn't really important. Clive nodded his head as we both read over the menu. Yeah, we'll both have the center cut filet, Clive said when the waitress returned and asked for hours. You know, in the movies, when you see the man order for the woman, it looks strange. As I was sitting there, amazed at his gall to order for me, I just felt understood. It's hard to describe. And can I also have a burger and fries to go? I said before the waitress left. She nodded her head and took our menus before disappearing behind the door. You got a hell of an appetite, huh? Clive Clive laughed. It's for my son. That's what's up. Little man I right with me. Before I knew what was happening, I was fixing my mouth to ask the question that had been on my mind. So what about you? Where's your woman? Do, 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 do. Here it go. Here it go. The, that question even caught me off, off guard. I mean, I had seen Clyde before, always with women, and had assumed he was one of those men that never committed or settled down. I needed confirmation shit. Funny you ask, he said as he finished it, the last of his drink. I'm actually separated from my wife right now. He started. I sat back in the chair and listened. If it was one thing I didn't do, it was judge someone because of how they chose to live their life. Okay. Me and her started going together when we were in high school, man. We've been together off and on for like 12 years, and she's the mother of my child. But listen, marriage changes things. It changes people. Just like I was saying, a child makes shit different in your life. So does a wife. He said profoundly as he looked off into space. After she got that ring, it was almost as if she wanted as she, after she got that ring, it was almost as if she wanted me to stay in the house all the time, never hang with my boys, and really, she didn't want me to have fun. Oh, I got you. I said, not knowing what else to say. So to answer your question, I don't have a woman. Legally, yes, I have a wife, but technically we've been separated for almost six months. Here go the bullshit that these niggas be putting us through.
Okay, that was red flag number one. I didn't have any issues dealing with Clive despite his issues and wife. My rational was she was his headache, not mine. Some people might have said I should have respected the fact that they were still married, but in my mind, he should have respected it first. I simply followed the leader. But enough about me, though. Let's talk about us. And that was the beginning of the end. All right, so now that's the end of that part of this chapter. Shit about to get real, okay? Clive told her, y'all heard Clive tell her, that he don't got no woman right now. He married legally, but they ain't together. That's what Clyde said, right? Now, that is a red flag for a woman. Yes, that's a red flag. But if you a stripper in the club, or if you just a woman out and about, and you meet this man, you don't owe nobody nothing. And bitch, if you out here trying to get your money, and trying to, um, you know what I'm saying? You trying to, girl, your bills need to get paid. Okay, and you got shoes and cars and stuff and shit you want to buy. Like, bitch, anybody husband or boyfriend can get it if I like them. You feel me? That that could be the mindset of some women. And I, I, I don't see nothing wrong with that mindset. I also don't see nothing wrong with the mindset of a woman that says that's something that I don't want to deal with. You know what I'm saying? But it, you got to be careful when you're making these choices with these men, okay? Because that's why it's a lot of women's on snack, okay? And he clearly said he don't got no woman. That's what he said, okay? Now, y'all ready to keep going with the story? Y'all make sure, this is my book, The Bottom Line. You can click the link in my bio and get your copy. We got the ebook version, we got the paperback version, and we got the signed paperback version okay this is the second week we're doing a new chapter we're gonna do about two more chapters and if y'all want to continue reading the book and get into the rest of the stories i suggest that y'all buy this book you feel me y'all can even just get the sample if you if you don't really know if it's gonna be good or not but it is you can also get the sample okay and that's why it's a lot of men on fatal attraction and for real like all right we're getting back into the story y'all that was the beginning of the end. Is that your natural hair? Yes, unfortunately. I don't get my hair done some, some, tomorrow, but I couldn't stand y'all up. So I'm here, bald-headed, no makeup. You know what I'm saying? Just because I love y'all. I promise y'all a date. We're going to read these books. We're going to do this book club every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Guess what? I don't care if I'm bald-headed. Every Wednesday at 8 p.m., this is where we finna be, okay? New books and all. All right. Okay, Clive, it's been six months, and you know what I'm realizing? I screamed loud enough to frighten myself. Man, Clive said, rolling his eyes and walking away from me. I stood in his bedroom, frustrated, pissed, and overwhelmed. Nah, nigga, you gonna listen to me, I shouted as I followed him into the, bedroom, into the bathroom. Tiff, I told you from the jump what it was with my wife, Clive said, picking up the toothbrush and toothpaste and proceeding to brush his teeth. And I've understood all that shit, right? I asked with my hands on my hips. Clive shrugged his shoulders. Oh, so now you don't know? You don't know that I kept this, us, a secret because of your wife and your kid? All right, Tiff, so what you want me to do? I told you she's moving back in and you can't spend the night here no more. I don't even get why the fuck we arguing about this. Here it go. Here it go. I told y'all it was a red motherfucking flag. I didn't jump to another part. The last part, what we read, right, is they was at dinner. Okay. She said, I didn't have issues dealing with Clive despite his issues and, and wife. Okay, let me go back a little bit more because y'all are confused. So remember they was at dinner, right? And he was explaining about his wife. And then he said, so to answer your question, I don't have a woman. Legally, yes, I have a wife. But technically, we've been separated for almost six months. Then she said, I didn't have an issue dealing with Clive despite his issues and wife. My rational was she was his headache and not mine. Some people might have said I should have respected the fact that they were still married. But in my mind, he should have respected it first. I simply followed the leader. But enough about me, though. Let's talk about us, Clive said. And that was the beginning 
of the end. Okay, that was when they went to dinner. Now we six months. Now it's six months later, okay? So now they beefing. Clive, it's been six months, and you know what I'm realizing? I screamed loud enough to frighten myself. Man, Clive said, rolling his eyes and walking away from me. I stood in his bedroom, frustrated, pissed, and overwhelmed. Nah, nigga, you gonna listen to me. I shouted as I followed him into the bathroom. Tiff, I told you from the jump what it was with my wife. Clive said, picking up the toothbrush and toothpaste and proceeding to brush his teeth. And I've understood all that shit, right? I asked with my hands on my hips. Clive shrugged his shoulders. Oh, so now you don't know? You don't know that I've kept this, us, a secret because of your wife and your kid? All right, Tiff, so what you want me to do? I told you she's moving back in and you can't spend the night here no more. I don't even get the why the fuck we arguing about this. All right, so y'all all caught up, caught up, right? It's six months later. Now they arguing about the wife. He done told, he done told this girl that he don't have a woman. He said, I don't, that's what he said specifically out his motherfucking mouth. Now it's six months later and he talk about, didn't I tell you about her? Okay. So. This is my book called The Bottom Line. I am the author. You can purchase this book by clicking the link in my bio. All right. So. I don't even get why the fuck we arguing about this. It was true. I didn't know why we were arguing either, but it made the, fit the situation feel more real. Earlier that morning, after six months of us spending practically every waking and sleeping moment together, fucking, loving, and everything in between, Clive told me that his wife was moving back into the house and I couldn't stay the night anymore. Now, a sane person would have just accepted that, tail between the legs, and left Clive alone. Me? I had invested in Clive and I couldn't lose out on my investment. In fact, the first 30 days of our relationship we spent together and without warning. No, in fact, the first 30 days of our relationship was spent, we spent every day together and without warning, I had fallen in love with him. It was something about the way he held me, listened to me and argued with me. I could feel his love for me too, though he never verbalized it. I stormed out of the bathroom and went and found my overnight duffel bag. I had a few items at his house and was ready to do a clean sweep and rid myself of him. If he wanted to push me away, I wasn't going to beg to stay. Where the hell you going? Clive said as he reappeared in the bedroom. He was wearing a pair of Jordan basketball shorts, socks and slides and a wife beater tank top. If I hadn't been so pissed, I would have fucked him right then and there. But I had to keep my game face on. I'm going home. Isn't that what you told me last night, Clive? You told me I can't stay here anymore because your wife moving back in, right? I could see the fumes coming from his head. It was like I knew all the buttons to push to piss him off. Tiffany, put the fucking bag down. He said through gritted teeth. I gripped the bag in my hand so tight I could feel my fingernails jabbing my palm. I wasn't moving. Didn't I tell you I had a wife? Clive said, approaching me slowly. I didn't answer. Fuck his answer. Didn't I tell you I was separated? I told your ass that. I didn't even acknowledge his existence as I stared out of his oversized window. I was biting my bottom lip because I felt something slick getting ready to come out my mouth. All I said was that you can't stay the night here anymore. I didn't say we, we wasn't going to spend time anymore. You know, I still got you. I took a deep breath and continued packing my things up. Clive reached for the bag and I snatched it back. Leave me alone, leave me alone Clive. Let me get my shit and go. This time, though, Clive didn't object. He sat back on the bed with his hands behind his head and kicked his feet up. I was cursing him out in my head the entire time, replaying conversations we had, nights we fucked in that very bed that his wife would be laying her ass in, and promises, promises he made to me. But I wasn't stupid by far. I knew that all Clive and I could ever be was a secret. He made it crystal clear that he wasn't divorcing his wife, but he also didn't want to let me go either. Niggas, girl, that was a red flag. She was post. She was supposed to leave. Like, girl, you were po you supposed to get up out that house. No questions asked. Like, period. So, as I got the rest of my things, I laced up my Air Max tennis shoes and grabbed my bags. I'll see you in the morning, Tiff. Bright and early, Clive said with so much nonchalant and nonchalance, it pissed me off. What? I asked with an attitude as I spun around. Inside, I guess, I was a little happy that we, he was keeping his word on giving me time. On the other hand, I wanted to slap the piss out of him for thinking he could just pop up at my house. I said, I'll see you tomorrow morning and every morning after that. 
You might not be staying here at night, but I'll be at your house every morning. I told you, I got you. I rolled my eyes and walked out of the house without looking back. Only problem was the feelings were so strong. I knew in my heart that something drastic was going to have to happen to make the connection that Clive and I shared stop. And there have been times too when I thought our relationship was over only to find out it was strengthened. Like the time I hooked up with a local dude named Jason only to find out that he was homeboys with Clive. How the word got back to Clive, I never know. All I remember is getting a call at 4 a.m. and Clive calling me telling me he was outside and to open the door. I didn't find it strange then because we spent every night together anyway. I figured he was just coming over to sleep. As soon as he got in the bedroom, he laid it into my ass. At first, it started with him cursing at me. Then it elevated to him screaming. And finally, it ended with him choking me. Oh, you didn't think I'd find out you was fucking that nigga Jason? You didn't think I'd find out, huh? Clive screamed as he wrapped his chocolate hands around my neck. I stared at him in his eyes and I was pissed. Get the fuck off of me, Clive, I yelled loudly as I kicked my legs wildly, freeing myself from his grip. I was so glad I had sent Marcus to my mother's house for the weekend. I walked briskly to the kitchen because I knew where the knives were. At. I knew there were knives in there in case I had to really defend myself. Nah, you got so much confidence to go and fuck that nigga. You talk to me like a woman and tell me what's up, Clive said, following, right, following me right on my tail. I spun around and faced Clive. I may have been smaller, but I was no punk. Clive, you have a wife. Why the fuck do you care who I'm fucking? I screamed, knowing exactly what to say to piss him off. See, Clive didn't want to think or imagine another man, especially his homeboy, fucking his girl. Even if he did have a wife, who knew nothing about her? It was a twisted reality, but it was our reality. Tiffany, I swear... You know what? Fuck you, he said as he walked out of my house with his hands on his head. I was sure that that was the last time I'd see Clyde. But a few days later, when I was working and doing, doing my stage set, I glanced up and saw him right in front of the stage with a few stacks in his hand. Now, it's pretty common knowledge that when a man comes in more than one time and spends money on a dancer, chances are they're involved. This wasn't the first time that Clive had made it rain while I danced that, but that night, all eyes was on me. Everyone knew about us, and Clive wasn't doing anything to quiet the rumors. I'll see you in the morning, Clive said as I made my rounds and stopped to speak to him at the bar. Yeah, that's cool, I said calmly. As usual, Clive had gotten over the situation and was back in my bed the next morning. Our connection was so intense, so real, that neither, but, neither one of us could deny it. The next day when I arrived at work, I saw a dancer named Dominica doing her makeup in the dressing room. I didn't know too much about her, but she always seemed to be laughing and had a really nice body. Me being me, I kept to myself. She started talking to me anyway, though. Hey, you're Tiffany, right? She asked with a strong Dominican accent. So, hello, you're Tiffany, right? <laughs> she asked with a strong Dominican accent. Yeah, I said plainly. I didn't trust people and I was fine with them not trusting me. I'm Dominica. I've seen your shows, girl. You are so good. She said with a smile that showed off her deep dimples. Thanks, I said as I started my eyebrows. No one else was in the dressing room but us, just like I liked it. I tried to get to the club before the rest of the girls, so I had plenty of space and time to get ready. I didn't like being rushed or crowded. Hey, last night, did you remember when you were dancing and that black guy make it rain on you during your stage set? The one who, who had the polo on. She was talking about Clyde. I could feel my face growing hot. Yeah, I remember. Why? By this time, I put my makeup on, my makeup brush down, and I had turned to face her. Why was she asking about Clive? Is that perfections, man? Because I don't want to step on nobody's toes or nothing. She asked plainly. I could tell she didn't know the full extent of my relationship with Clive and the fact that he was my man. But I let her continue. Why do you say he's perfection's man? I inquired with the dumbest look on my face. Dominica shrugged her, her shoulders and sucked her teeth. Just what I heard. I heard that they were messing around. I mean, he's here every Tuesday and Thursday when she's here. And he's always dancing her. So I figured that's her, that's her boyfriend. I was livid. Dominica, if what Dominica was saying was true... 
Clive was purposely coming in on days when I wasn't there just to dance and spend money on perfection. Ooh, girl, red flag. Oh, these niggas ain't shit. Okay. And it's so crazy because this, you know, this is an actual true story. So I got to relive it. And I just remember all my feelings and emotions. But we'll get to that at the end of the book. Okay. Okay. If, if I was livid, if what Dominica was saying was true, Clive was purposely coming in on my days off just to dance and spend money on perfection. And perfection acts like that's her dude. So I just want to know before I make my moves, you know. Who doesn't, who doesn't want no, no man, no customer who throw money like that? Y'all know those Spanish strippers? They do not play. They will fuck your nigga, your daddy, your uncle, your cousin, bitch. As if on cue, girls started pouring into the dressing room to get ready for their shifts. I couldn't see or think straight. I didn't want to believe Clive would mess with someone I considered an associate and who also worked at the same club as me. But I was nobody's fool. But remember, perfection is the girl that she accused of stealing her money in the beginning. And their relationship ain't been the same since. So now she finding out perfection fucking her nigga. Okay. I saw perfection walk in and I gritted my teeth and marched right up to her. I didn't care who heard me or saw me. Are you fucking Clive? I said with a straight face. It was one thing I wasn't going to have, and that was me looking like a fool. If Clive was playing me, cool. But I wasn't going to have both of them thinking they was getting over on me. What? Who told you that? Perfection asked loudly as she scanned the room. Answer the question. Are you fucking Clive? Tiff, I know that's your people. I wouldn't do that. No. Something in me knew she was lying. Call it intuition. And as much intuition as I had, I didn't have any proof to accompany it. So it was almost like I had nothing. I rolled my eyes at Perfection and went to my bag to grab my cell phone. I could have sworn I heard Perfection giggling as I exited the room, but as usual, I was focused on finding out the truth. What's up, baby girl? Clive said when he answered the phone. I could tell he was driving by the way the wind was blowing in the background. So I'm sitting in the dressing room getting ready, and this random dancer that tells me that she heard you fucking Perfection. Is this true, Clive? I already, I already, I asked. I, but I already knew the answer in my gut. There was a silence on the end, other end of the phone for a few seconds. So I asked the question again. This time, I remixed it. Are you fucking perfection and coming in on my off days to dance her? I yelled. I was tired of, of his shit and tired of feeling like I was being played. I often told Clive having him in my life was like having an invisible boyfriend. Someone I couldn't claim or be out with, but who wanted to control every aspect of my life. As much as I wanted to blame him, I blamed myself just as much. Man, nah, I ain't fucking that girl. I came in and danced a few times, but that's it. I could tell he was lying, and he could tell I wasn't letting it go. So you telling me you're not fucking her? Why would some random ass girl come and say she heard y'all was? She didn't even know about me and you, and she's telling me this. If she thinks this, imagine what everybody else thinks, Clive. I was pacing in the back of the club at this point. Man, fuck what everybody else think. I told you I ain't fucking and that's that. Either you believe me or you're going to believe them hoes. I was so insulted that Clive was lying to me. I couldn't let him win, even at this argument. We kept our argument going for an hour straight until Barry popped out and told me to get my ass in there to make money. She always had a way of making me focus on what really mattered. I poured up that night and danced like I had no worries in the world. I tried not to think about Clyde, but I did. I was less stressed that he was messing with other women than I was about him lying about it. When I got home that night, I crashed and was surprised when I heard the key turning in the front door. Clyde was spending the night. I didn't ask any questions and he didn't provide any answers. I was cool with it. I knew how I felt when I was with him and everything else was irrelevant. I kept the thought of perfection in Clive in the back of my mind, far in the back, but it was still in my mind. Child, shit getting juicy, whoa. Yeah, I'm found out perfection fucking her man. Clive said he ain't fucking perfect. Perfection said she ain't fucking Clive. There's a lot of fucking going on. Excuse me. Months had flown by. Okay, we fast forward, okay? Y'all, everybody who 
remember last time y'all got confused as to where we was at. We, we, we months forward now, okay? Let me move this up a little bit so I can make sure y'all hear me. All right. Y'all, this, this story is too much for me. Months had flown by, and before I knew it, Clive and I were into one year of seeing each other. What started out as a strong connection had turned into a relationship that consisted of petty arguments and fights. What's up with you? Barry asked me over drinks one afternoon. I wasn't in the mood to tell her what I was really feeling, but on the flip side, I needed to vent. Girl, I started as I took a deep breath. Clive. Barry rolled her eyes. She had told me from the beginning that Clive wasn't shit, and still, I got hooked on his ass. Here I was, technically single, but expected to remain loyal and devoted to a man who had a wife and a child and a woman on the side. Me. Say no more. Y'all still arguing? She asked as she sat back and crossed her arms and across her chest. Barry looked cute that day with her hair curled and oversized shades adorning her face. I looked okay, but my spirits felt like shit. Are we? Girl, that's all we do. It feels like when every time we see each other, we argue. We're, when we're away from each other, we argue. When we get on the phone with each other, we argue. I'm getting tired of it, and I'm getting tired of him. About time, Barry said, shrugging her shoulders. I've been told you to let that man go. He's going to roam wherever he sees fit, and he still wants you to keep that pussy for him only? I nodded my head in agreement. She was right. Now, like I said before, I was nobody's fool. Of course, I've been with other men while Clive was in the picture. I wasn't about to be sitting at home playing with myself while I wondered what and who he was doing. Like clockwork, word would get back to Clive and we would end up arguing and not speaking for days or sometimes weeks. But I met somebody, though. His name's T, I said with a quick grin. I had met T a few weeks earlier when I was out shopping with my mom. Initially, I didn't think he was interested, but when he approached me and asked for my number, I was proven wrong. T was fine, too. He was 6'1", had caramel colored skin, a full beard, bedroom eyes, and a smile that lit up the room. I could tell he was a street guy, but he carried himself like he was the president of a Fortune 500 company. I liked his style and, more importantly, how he treated me. He didn't care that I danced, but he also made sure I knew that whatever I needed, he had me. I had him. Oh shit, no, Barry said excitedly as she clapped her hands together. Yes, girl, we've been out and everything. He is so cool. You told Clive about him? Barry asked with a mis mischievous mark, smirk. I chuckled before taking a swig of my drink. Hell no. Has he told me about any of his other hoes? He's not entitled to anything other than what I give him. Barry clapped her hands loudly, causing the rest of the rest causing the rest of the restaurant to turn and look and proclaimed my bitch is back we both laughed heartedly as my phone started buzzing speaking of the devil it's clive hold on i said as i put the phone to my ear as soon as he started speaking i could tell it was going to be an argument tip who the fuck you been fucking i sucked my teeth and rolled my eyes why clive why you been fucking Listen, if I find out about one more nigga, I swear to God, I'ma fuck you up. I put that on my baby. If I find out about another nigga that's been lying, laying in your bed, I'll... You're what, Clive? Leave your wife? Fuck another stripper at the club? Find another hoe to string along for a year? What? What you gonna do, Clive? I don't know if I caught him off guard with my statement or if he was actually thinking of a comeback. Luckily, though, I didn't give him time to respond. Fuck you, Clive, I said before I hung up. I was tired of him. And finally, I was trying to hang up on my feelings with Clyde. All right. Is y'all feeling the story? Is it, is it getting juicier? Is y'all feeling the story? All right. Everybody's just listening. I feel y'all. Everybody's listening. I'm trying to make sure I ain't missing, like, no questions and stuff. All right. We are welcome to all the new people. We are reading my book, The Bottom Line. Y'all can click the link in my bio and get the... Ebook e e version, the paperback version, or the signed paperback version. The book is called The Bottom Line, written by me. Click the link in my bio to get your copy, okay? All right, so it's getting juicy. Now Clive, he, Clive, done told this girl he ain't have a wife. Then he told this girl the wife moving in. 
Then now he's with his wife every night. He sleep with the wife and wake up in the morning and go see Tiffany in the morning. But he want Tiffany to stay home at night by herself and wait for him to leave his wife to come be with her. So Tiffany can't fuck nobody. So every time Clyde find out that Tiffany fuck somebody else, he get mad. But it's like, why are you getting mad, nigga? You got a whole wife that you live with. It's all type of red flags for both parties. But, you know, whatever float people boat. I don't know, but this shit sound like a whole headache. I swear. I don't know if I call him off. Well. Okay. Fuck you, Clive. I said before I hung up. I was tired of him. And finally, I was trying to hang up on my feelings. I was standing by the bar talking to the bartender when one of the dancers came up beside me and looked me dead in my eyes and said, Clive and Misty are fucking around. I thought you should know. Now, remember, Misty was her homegirl, Barry's homegirl, but... They was cool because they had, you know, they were both mothers. They had that in common, but they were cool. They hung out. They said they went to eat and everything, okay? So now somebody come up to Tiffany and say, Clive and Misty fucking, I thought you should know. Girl, what? I cocked my head back and sucked my teeth. Technically, I didn't have any right to be mad. I hadn't spoken to Clive in over a month. After I hung up on him in our relationship. Still though, I was a little bothered. The perfection rumor was one thing, but Misty, this rumor had me bothered the most. How do you know that? I asked, trying not to seem like I cared. The girl, a skinny little 18-year-old that had just started dancing at the club, spoke with certainty. Certainty. Because that bitch Misty fucked my sister's man too. She's all about the dollar. Don't be stupid. I tried to think back on my relationship with Misty. I knew she knew about me and Clive, and I knew Clive knew Misty was an associate of mine. And still, the rumors were in my face. It was funny because a few days earlier, Clive had come into the club and danced Misty and another dancer. But because we weren't talking, I couldn't be mad or call him out on it. I ain't say shit to his ass. Now, it was all coming together. Mm -mm. See, while I wanted to step to Clive and call him out about dancing Misty when it happened, I didn't. The rule in the strip club was, regardless of what you and another dancer have going on, you do not mess with her money. You do not mess with another stripper's money, bitch. You don't step on nobody's toes, regardless of what the situation is. Whatever it is, y'all handle that shit in the dressing room or on the street, but you don't fuck with a bitch money on the floor, okay? All right. Besides, I thought it was Misty. I thought, besides, I thought it was Misty. She wouldn't do that to me. And she had a man anyway. Boy, was I wrong. In the grand scheme of things, I couldn't confront Clive. We weren't talking. And I couldn't confront Misty because we weren't technically friends. It bothered me, though. But I left it alone. Imagine my surprise two weeks later when Clive showed up at my house ready to take me out and apologize for everything. What are you doing here, Clive? I asked through a heavy sigh. I was happy to see him and even happier that he was there to apologize, but I was tired of this back and forth game we were playing. Also, I still had tea in my back pocket and I really was starting to like him. Let's go to Houston's baby girl, Clive said, exposing his white teeth. And just like that, we were reunited. I fucked Clive so good that night, I was sure he wouldn't need sex for another week. I wanted to show him just what he was giving up each time he decided not to talk to me for weeks. And most importantly, what he was letting another nigga get. You know, he, oh, you know what it always come back to you, right? Clive said as we lay in the bed that night after dinner. I smirked and then went for the kill. Are you fucking Misty? Clive looked at me in the eyes and kissed my forehead. Here you go again with this shit, Tiff. Hell no. I rolled my eyes. I wasn't even sure why I'd ask because in my mind, I knew the truth. Clive was fucking Misty and that was that. Who told you that shit? People talk, Clive. Just like they go back and tell you everything I do, they want to tell me everything and everyone you do. We didn't speak another word to each other that night. Partially, I think because we were out of words. We had said everything there was to say. I wasn't sure if I was still interested in being on this roller coaster with Clive, but my heart has a tendency to wake up far later than my mind. Girl, that's most of us women, girl. We is retarded. We be slow sometimes for these niggas. For a little bit of penis and a little bit of attention, bitch. A bitch be slow. A bitch just, they heart be motherfucking moving fast. The brain moving slow. Like, shit be all fucked up. And we just be all in our feelings. But when we get our feelings together, these niggas got another thing coming. I feel you, Tiffany. 
I wasn't sure if I was still interested in being on this roller coaster with Clive, but my heart has a tendency to wake up far later than my mind. As usual, weeks went by in between Clive and I speaking. I was so over trying to figure out why he came and went into my life. When he was there, he was all the way there. When he left, it was like he never existed. My relationship with T was growing by the day. When he said he'd do something, he did it. When he promised not to do something, he always kept his word. I like that. Our relationship was getting stronger. So strong, he started spending the night at my place. I liked having a warm body in my bed. And since I couldn't have Clive, I knew I didn't have to look any further than T. The way I felt when I was with T was almost indescribable. My connection with Clive had been off the charts, but the way I felt around T wasn't easy to explain. I felt safe, supported, and wanted. Unlike Clive, T didn't keep me a secret from the world. He wanted to be seen with me and was proud to do so. So tomorrow we'll go to that restaurant I was telling you about on South Beach. He said to me as we lay in the bed one night, I hate to go in the South Beach Bay, I whined. Well, yeah, it's going to like you tomorrow, bet that. I laughed at him and snuggled underneath his armpit and fell asleep. I woke up to my phone ringing nonstop. Either it was an emergency or a persistent bill collector. Either way, I was annoyed. I looked over at T as he snored next to me. I finally rose up and picked up my phone. Hello, I said in a groggy tone. Where the fuck you at? Clive barked. Oh, shit. Bitch. Oh, bitch. Huh? I'm, um, um, I'm headed to court. I lied. Why I was lying was beyond me. I didn't owe Clive the truth or a lie. All I knew I was lying here with T and Clive could have very well been on his way to my house. I told him I was on my way to court, hoping it would buy me a few hours to get myself and T out of there. I didn't need the drama and I definitely didn't need to involve T in it either. By noon, Clive was calling again, and T and I was still laid in the bed, cuddled up. I thought Clive would have taken the hint and just left me alone, but no, he didn't. I looked at my phone as it rang for the 20th time. You need to get that? T asked with a raised eyebrow as he kept his eye on the sports center. Nah, I'm good, babe, I replied as I hugged him tighter. Shit. <laughs> I wanted to answer the phone and tell Clive just to get with me later, but as luck would have it, as luck would have it, Clive decided to take matters into his own hands. Oh. <laughs> Shit about to get real. Clive said, bitch, where is you at? <laughs> she said, I wanted to answer the phone and tell Clive to get with me later. Girl, you know Clive ain't going for that. So, as luck would have it, Clive decided to take matters into his own hands. I heard the front door unlock, but before I could react, I heard footsteps bounding up the stairs towards my bedroom. The first thing I could think to do was hide underneath the covers. T looked over at me like I was crazy. I wanted to apologize to him ahead of time for what was about to happen. <laughs> I heard the door being kicked in and T jumped up and grabbed his pants. What the fuck is going on here? Clive yelled as he pulled the covers off my naked body. T scrambled to put his boxes on and then his pants and tried to make sense of everything. Yo, what the fuck this nigga laid up in my bed, Tiffany? Clive screamed loudly. I didn't have sense to say anything, so I just laid there and looked at Clive. You're such a bitch, Tiffany, and you a hoe, Clive said as he pulled me by my arm and off the bed. I didn't know what Clive was going to do, but I knew what he was capable of. Before I knew it, I felt his fist collide with my face. I gripped it tightly with my hand and wailed in pain. How could you do this to me, Tiffany? Clive screamed as he paced the room. T was fully dressed by this time and was making his way out the house. T got the fuck from around these people. I figured this was the last time I was going to see T. Why would you do to me? Why would you do this to me? After all this time together and you laid up in here with this nigga? Clive screamed. I was crumbled in fetal position as I cradled my bruised and aching face in my hand. Answer me, bitch, Clive yelled. When I had enough of his sluts and bitches and hoes, I mustered up the strength to answer. You have a wife, Clive. I'm not your woman, and I'll never be your woman. This gotta stop. All this shit you doing, it has to fucking stop. 
You don't want me, but you don't want another nigga to have me either. What kind of fucked up shit is that, Clyde? I said as I stood up. I touched my sensitive face and immediately got pissed. And you fucking hit me in my face, Clyde? I said as I started swinging my own hands and connecting with his hard body. I knew my blows wouldn't cause him any ounce of pain, but I, I'm sure I wanted to try. By the time Clive left, I had vow vowed I would never fuck with him like that again. It was too draining on me, and I had allowed myself to jeopardize a decent relationship with T for a fucked up one with Clive. Child, these people is crazy. T done put on his boxes and got the fuck from around there. We are reading my book, The Bottom Line, okay? If you want to purchase my book, if you want to read more stories, click the link in my bio. You can get the ebook version, the paper book copy, or the signed paper book copy, okay? The book is called The Bottom Line. The chapter we are reading is Karma. And there's some real shit going on here. So I'm going to have to get back to y'all who don't know what the fuck going on. Or ask somebody else cause they, so they can fill y'all in because this shit getting good. Hold on. So... By the time Clive left, I had vowed I would never fuck with him like that again. It was too draining on me and I had swallowed, I had allowed myself to jeopardize a decent relationship with T for a fucked up one with Clive. A few weeks went by and of course the entire strip club had heard what had happened. I wasn't going to deny or play into any of the rumors. I wasn't the first woman to be beat on by a boyfriend and I damn sure wasn't going to be the last one. I took everything in stride and ignored the whispers and stares. Thankfully, T hadn't walked out on me after all. After I'd explained everything to him and laid out the entire relationship that Clive and I had, he decided to stick around. I was grateful for that because through it all, T was the ounce of normalcy and stability that I craved. Hey Tiff, can I talk to you outside? Cat asked one night before my shift started. So remember Cat from the beginning of the story, she was a liar. She was perfection's friend. Cat was perfection friend and she just always lied, lie, 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 lie. Yeah, what's up? I said as I went behind the club, as we went behind the club, I heard about what happened with you and Clive. Can I ask you a question? What's he like? Bitch, how the fuck you gonna tell me you heard what happened with me and Clive and then ask me, and then ask me, what's he like? Hold on, we got to see what the fuck this whole said. What? What's he like? If I had Q-tips in my ears, I would have cleaned them to make sure I was hearing correctly. Was Cat really asking me what my ex-man was like? I played it cool, though, and answered. Tiffany talk about, she talk about, did Cat really ask me what my ex-man was like? Did she really tell you she heard what happened? And then the next question was, what's he like? Damn, if he was your ex, bitch. Was Cat really asking me what my ex-man was like? I played it cool, though, and I answered. He's cool, a little aggressive, but cool. I said matter-of-factly. Why, I asked before I let my assumptions get the best of me. Cat cleared her throat before answering. I wanted to let you know before anyone else told you, Tiff. Me and Clive are talking right now. I wanted to feel something for what she was saying, but I didn't. I had blocked Clive out of my mind so much that it didn't even hurt to know he was dealing with someone else I worked with. Oh, okay, I said, shrugging my shoulders. How long has that been going on? When Kat said the length of time, my mouth dropped. It's been off and on for like six months. You know I was with him for like a year and a half, right? I asked, giving Kat the opportunity to choose her words wisely. I knew she was a habitual liar, but something in me told me she was telling the entire truth this time around. Clive always made it seem like y'all was done. When I asked him about you, he always made it seem like, you know, you was a hoe and that he left you because you was a hoe. Hearing those things did hurt me. I won't lie. To have spent a year and, a, and some change devoted to a person who could so easily slander your name in public was a hard pill to swallow. You know what? I said as I cut her off, I don't care about Clive anymore. I'm not fucking with him and he's not fucking with me. So good luck on that. I said as I walked off and let Kat, left Cat standing there alone. I had a good thing with T and I wasn't about to mess up a potential bright future with a shady dark past. If Clive wanted Cat... He could have her and anybody else that he wanted. I was off the roller coaster. Well, finally, girl. Goddamn. Took you all that time to figure out Clive was it shit. Goddamn. 
Okay. Y'all good? Everybody caught up? Everybody caught up? Y'all want me to keep going? Y'all ready for me to keep going? It's almost over. It's almost over. But, child. It's a lot going on in this motherfucking love triangle square. Whatever the hell it is, bitch. It's a lot going on. It's juicy as hell. Do y'all want me to keep going? Or what? Because y'all is like not... What? You wish I had an audio version. You know what? I was trying to get an audio version, but they keep telling me that I have to hire someone to do it. And I feel like I am not going to let no white person read my book. Like, it's certain things that got to be said a certain way in order for um, it to be on audiobook. I am not going to have no white person talking about, you know what I said as I cut her off. I don't care about Clive anymore. I am not fucking bitch. This shit got emphasis, okay? This shit so good, bitch. We need sound effects and all on my motherfucking... That, you, I'm going to do my own audio version. I got to find out how to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to figure that. That's a good... That's a good... Good idea, y'all. All right. Back to the story. I had a good thing with T, and I wasn't about to mess up a potential bright future with a shady, dark past. If Clive wanted Cat, he could have her and anyone else he wanted. I was off the roller coaster. Months had passed by, and I was still doing my thing. I had stopped stripping, but was now waitressing at a popular strip club. It didn't pay what stripping did, but I made do and had a lot of customers who tipped great. One night, as I was taking some drink orders from a group of guys, I looked up and saw Clive and a friend walk in. I hadn't seen him in so long that my heart did a little pitter-patter thing, and I had to remind myself where I was. All right. I'll go, I'll go put these in, and as soon as they're ready, I'll be back, I said with a wink to the group of the guys. I walked to the bar, knowing Clive was watching me, and dropped the drink order off. A part of me was nervous as I saw Clive coming towards me. Hey, he said as he took a seat on a bar stool next to where I stood. Here go Clive and his motherfucking toxic air, okay? Here, here go it, his toxic ass. Do it on YouTube. Okay, yeah, I'm going to do it. Do what on YouTube? Do the live reading? <coughs> I could just save these videos and put it on YouTube. Oh, so everybody could go back and re listen to the story? I got it. Right? All right. What's up, Clive? I replied as I glanced over at him. He looked so good. He looked real good. I see you over there charming them niggas out they money. Huh? It's what I do best. I joked as, I, as a smile crept across my face. If I hadn't been in the room that day when Clive punched me in my face, I would have never known that it happened. The way we were laughing, you would have thought we were best friends. Oh, shit. Here she go. You want to drink or something? I asked. Yeah, the usual. Clive said as he sat back and surveyed the room. Hey, Colleen, get this nigga an apple martini. It's his favorite. I said loudly. Hey, don't try me, man. Clive laughed as he shoved my shoulder lightly. It felt like I had my friend back. Give him two crown and cokes, Colleen. I finally said as Colleen filled my drink orders and put them on my tray. I'll be back, I said as I went to the group of guys and dropped off their drinks. When I got back, Clive asked, you been good? I took a seat next to him and crossed my legs. I have been good, real good. Yeah, I'm better than ever. No complaints over here. Good, I like to hear that. I tried not to smile too widely. What about you? How's everything been? Clive took his drink to the head and answered. Hustling, man. You know, trying to stay alive. Typical nigga shit. Typical nigga shit. I contemplated my next question but jumped right in. If the chemistry hadn't been so spot on and it didn't seem like we let all our anger go, I wouldn't have asked. Here, here she go. Here she go. With the bullshit. Here she go. She just left that shit alone. Let me ask you some stuff I always wanted to I always wanted to know, Clyde. Shoot, Clyde said with a smile. Were you ever really messing around with perfection, Misty and Cat? Clyde seemed like he was expecting the answer and had maybe e Clyde seemed like he was expecting the answer and had maybe even prepared for it. Perfection, yes, we messed around, but not anymore. Cat yeah, we talked for like two months, but then I found out that bitch was a liar and I cut her off. I can't deal with liars, Clive said with a seriousness. The irony in him not being able to deal with liars while being one was funny to me, but I let him continue. And Misty? Yeah, we messed around too. She had a man and all that, but 
That didn't last too long either. Why are you asking after all this time, Tiff? I thought long and hard about the question before answering. I wasn't asking because I cared. I was asking for clarity. You know, all those times I would ask you and you would tell me I was out of my mind for thinking that, I knew I wasn't. I asked not because I care about you anymore like that, but because all these women were in my face night after night. And as soon as they could, they screwed me over. Yeah, you can't trust these hoes, Clive said with a slight chuckle. <laughs> the nerve of this nigga. <laughs> or these niggas. <laughs> That's right. I said with a raised eyebrow. Here, I was thinking I was doing something for myself by having a nigga come into the club and constantly make it rain on me. I fucked up when I caught feelings for you. And you know what? You did too. Because as soon as feelings got involved, shit got tough. I said as I bit the inside of my lip. And it was true too. As soon as the woman saw I was making money off of Clive and having a steady grin on my face because of him, they set their sights on getting him too. I knew I was wrong from the jump. Getting involved with a married man and falling in love with him was my first mistake. But I was seeing dollars and damn love. Real tough, Clive said with a hint of sadness in his voice. Tiffany, we have a table of 10 that just sat down that needs drinks. The bartender yelled in my direction. I guess what you see really isn't what you get, huh? I asked as I stood up and brushed my skirt. You got that right, Clive said, shaking his head as he watched me walk off. I never held any harsh feelings for any of the dancers who were messing with Clive behind my back. How could I? I love the perks of having a man who, who made it rain on me, and in turn, the other wanted the other dancers wanted those same perks. I couldn't fault them for wanting what looked like gold, only to find out it wasn't. Hey, how y'all paying, cash or credit or both? I asked the group of 10 men as they sat at a table near the stage. It's on me, baby, one man yelled as he pulled out $2,000 and popped it on the table. Money talk. Bring us around the vo vodka and cranberries and give me the rest in ones. I took their drink orders to note and collected the money and headed to get their change. While I strutted back to the bar with their expensive drink orders, I smiled at Clive. Karma was a bitch, but at the end of the day, money was the motive. And money was the bottom line. Period. That's the end of the chapter, y'all, with karma. The name of that, that chapter was karma. Last week we read, um, who we read last week? We, we read Kaylin last week. So, this week was karma. How did y'all like the story? Stay with us. <laughs> Did y'all like this story? This, I think, was... Okay, this was a dope story. It was... Um, now, this story... Like I said, all my stories have, like, a little piece of me in them. It's either something I've been through personally or things that I've seen or stories that, you know, dancers have told me that were either friends of mine or, you know, just, you know, told me little stuff. So, um, this story with Clyde everything in that story was true everything happened to me in this story i was obviously uh tiffany i had i had a boyfriend well i don't know how y'all want to call it but you know he was my boyfriend and he had he didn't have a wife but he had a baby mother and um he had the baby mother. We we did get together when we first got together. This nigga did tell me he was like, "Yeah, I got a baby mother," but we separated. So like, we spent a lot of time together. We like got real, real, real close. And then out of the blue, this nigga was like, "Oh, um, my girl moving back in." This like after like six months of us being in like we was in like a relationship. Like I couldn't see nobody else. He didn't want me out with nobody else. He didn't want me entertaining nobody else. He told me specifically. You mine, and that's what it is. You know what I'm saying? And um, I wasn't allowed to see nobody else, but I didn't want to see nobody else because I was, like, heavily into him. And then out the blue.